Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This episode, we're going to be discussing a Hero Clicks buyer's guide. So, hopefully, you sent this over to your loved ones, significant others, fellow Hero Clicks players, whoever it may be in your life. And if you are those people, then hello, welcome to Dial H for Hero Clicks. Hopefully, we can help you choose the perfect gift for the Clicks player in your life. This is episode 443. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey Google, back some Let's attack Jimmy. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sale products. Make sure to check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D I A L 5, for 5% off your Cool Stuff Inc. order. You're going to want to write that down because we'll probably mention them sometime this episode where you can get some cool Hero Clicks gifts. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah, it's me. I've been reading a lot of uh, comics lately. Oh, right on. Getting prepared, getting ready, enjoying some good old comic book stories. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, guys, ladies, gentlemen, whoever may be listening to this, the beginning of the episode is all going to be a holiday gift guide so that you can buy things for the Hero Clicks player in your life. Because maybe you don't fully understand what all they need, what all they have, what you should buy them. And as people in the past who've gotten gifts of quote unquote Hero Clicks before from our family members that didn't quite fully understand uh, what to get us, you know, we're here to help or Hero Clicks player in your life. That being said, that'll be all in the beginning of the show. And if you are a regular Dial H listener, please continue after the, the gift guide. And we'll have our, our regular show for the rest of the week where we kind of talk about Scott Porter's day one unboxing as we're recording this Monday night. But Simeon, the holidays are right around the corner. So I tried to choose a lot of things that weren't shipping related. Since it is the it 12th, is, yeah, cut as of this recording, we're getting really, yeah, we're getting it's been tight. Um, but I do know most of the places that I will recommend for shipping should be in a week or two. So if you're listening to this this week, it should hopefully be safe to get to you by then. And I try to yeah. cut down on complications. So for anybody that maybe would say, Oh, you should have recommended like a tray by Jeremiah or dice by stand <laughs> yeah. up. Those are custom things that take a while. And also, no offense, I wouldn't trust like my friends in my life to get me a custom Hero Clicks tray if they don't right. know anything about Hero Click. Yeah. So I like, try to I, keep them like safe. If I was buying uh <laughs> if I was buying a a gift for like let's see. Let me let me pick somebody who I who I know exactly what I would get a gift for. Um, okay, this this is an easy one. If I was buying a gift for McConnell Lamar, for example, uh, okay. and I wanted to reach out to uh, Hyper Two Sonic and be like, "Hey, can you get me like a Sasuke custom?" That's something uh, that I I just I know he likes Naruto, and I know Hyper Two Sonic does awesome customs. Um, that's not going to probably be done in time for Christmas this year, uh, just because right. Hyper Two Sonic. Uh, one, he's an artist, and he takes a little while because he does a good job, but also because he's probably got a back order of stuff that he's working on. So, uh, yeah, those aren't great options. Obviously, if if I know when his birthday is and I want to like get something, you know started so i have it or if i just want to give him like the gift receipt and be like yeah you have this to look forward to those are <laughs> options but uh True. yeah so first things first this is a very simple one for all you listeners out there if you want to get a hero who's player something it really the latest set sealed product of the latest set does not hurt at all right. um the latest set is avengers forever it is a blue box <clears throat> Oh my gosh. It has uh, a very flat art style. It has Iron Man on the front. 
can't miss it, but it's a blue box, Iron Man on the front. That's the latest set. Yeah. So a Avengers brick of forever. that, I'm sure they'd love it. Yeah, Avengers yeah. forever. Yeah, sealed product is probably the number one easiest gift for a Hero Clicks player. Um, I don't recommend usually uh, buying older sealed product because you just don't know how much they've collected. So if I was buying like Calder or something, I was like, I, I know he really likes Captain America. And so I bought him like the original Captain America set. Well, jokes on me, he owns that entire set already. So <laughs> what is he really pulling from that that he needs? Nothing. Um, now I might like enjoy the, the you know doubles that he ends up getting or something like that. But yeah, that is a a reason to avoid buying older sets. Um, I'll add on to that. Uh, we do know that. Batman team up is coming out soon. So you could pre-order that for them. You could get them like a brick or case pre-ordered or, you know, the, the whatever starter set. Now, like even if they already have a brick or case pre-ordered getting a second one for Christmas, even though it might not show up for Christmas, isn't right. a bad deal. That's, that's a, you know, gift. like you said, a little receipt in the sock in the stocking or something, you know? Yeah. A little, oh, something fun. Little, yeah. A little printout of the receipt. <laughs> yeah. And now wouldn't be a bad time to get it either. So if you do end up going any of the pre-order routes on the WizKids website. Now, again, friends and family, this is a bit of a, a bit of a risk, but they are doing a thing where you get a free. Currently, it's a Jack Frost promo figure. Any purchase from the 12th through the 18th. It's a very this is a old this is a very old figure um, at this point, but it is still an extra thing. So if you do want to pre from WizKids, uh, the hero, right, there's an ad. Error. If you pre-order from Cool Stuff Inc., like we said, and get a little five percent off using our code Dial Five. So you know, mm -hmm. think about doing that. And if you ever heard them talk about any of the sets throughout the year, I'll just go ahead and you know list off the sets that came out this year slash the sets I think will be in modern or the longest the assumption that Wonder Woman isn't in it. So the Disney Plus set has Captain Carter, so that's the the British lady. She'll have a Captain America-esque shield, but it has the Union Jack instead of the star in the middle. There's also the Ten of Swords or X-Men X of Swords pack that has Wolverine with a katana on the front. May not look like Wolverine. I don't know if his claws are popped. I don't think they are, but he's in a yellow uh, and tan-ish brown yeah, he's suit. He's got the big pointy ear big looking. Sword. Yeah, things. he's got the big black yeah side ear things. War of the Realms set. Again, if you're uh, husband, significant other, friend, whoever likes Thor, they'll probably be okay with some of this set. Real quick, not a very great set overall, not a well received one, so maybe not. I would say, you know, I'm just for prosperity's sake to tell you all the sets. War of the Realms has a another just picture of Thor, very flat artwork, thick lines, and then Avengers Empire set. I honestly can't remember what the boosters for this one look like. I know they're blue, but so probably some of those but safest bet is get them avengers forever the as it avengers, is the uh latest, avengers for yeah. or avengers for empire. sorry avengers fantastic four empire um it's got a blue suited spider-man oh, right. over the like the text and then a blue suited wolverine with like the oh. they're like quote unquote like fantastic four uniforms uh that's right. like what the artwork on those ones are the front at least these are all the sets that have come out in the last year. So they're all probably relatively safe picks. I know even though I didn't even buy any War of the Realms when it was out, if um, you know my brother got me a brick of War of the Realms, I'd be like, that's pretty awesome. You know, um, I can't, can't lie. That'd be a really solid gift. So but again, Avengers Forever is the latest set, and so probably the best set to buy. So that is sealed product. Again, yeah. this is your safest bet. If you got a... And all of this depends on a lot of things. So like... Factors that I would uh, go into when trying to decide which set I'm buying for them. Are they really interested? So if it's somebody that's like really into Thor, they really love Thor. So they might have already bought a bunch of War of the Realms. Um, like financially, like were they somebody that could have bought like two cases or got all the chases, all the figures and everything they wanted? Because like if the answer's no, like they probably didn't buy a, like heavily into it. Or if they're just not like a big collector, maybe they didn't buy heavily into it. Then it's like a safe bet. If it's somebody that just like you know buys, like you see them get tons of like this product in, 
they buy like tons of it you know you see them like unboxing or um just like have like shelves filled with stuff maybe they already have enough of like even like especially like the sets that they're really into um so those are like those are things to consider if it's a guy that is really into as guardians and thor and stuff like that that's his favorite character he might have already bought a bunch of this set um with like the caveat of like if he you know was budgeting for a reason or if he's just not like a heavy collector for hero clicks then like maybe he didn't buy the whole set um and uh, then there's like other things like so you might see like the fast forces you might see starter sets for these sets uh those are things i would usually avoid as far as gifts go because if you don't already know whether or not they have them then like just assume that they do if they don't already have them and you know that for like a fact then they're pretty good options like that's a like a fast force of war of the realms is a pretty good option for somebody that collects Thor stuff or like Avenger stuff even. Um, well, not, not really Avenger stuff. There's only three Avengers right. in it, but like, uh, yeah, like, uh, the fast forces for war of the realms is like a quick six figure starter thing. Uh, the fast or the starter set for Disney plus has a few more figures in it it's got uh what is it 10 figures yeah so that one's a little bit bigger if you know that they didn't get that one if like for sure you know that they didn't get the starter set getting them that starter set will give them a a most updated pac um at least at the time of this recording uh it'll get them 10 figures with 20 different dials that they can use um yeah it's got like a bunch of stuff in it that's like a solid buy. It's got maps. Yeah. It's got a bunch of like stuff uh, that they can use and play around with if they didn't already have it. But that's something where unless you know that they like for sure did not have that, I would avoid. Right. Yeah. You go back to like buying bricks just so you guys know a brick costs $170. You may be able to find a better price somewhere, a uh, better, it'd be a deal for the holidays or something. So, you know, a full 10 boosters of a set that's come out in the last year is going to run you about $170 is quite a gift. So if you had like some sealed product, I'll definitely enjoy it. I would say if you think they already have a ton of stuff from a certain set, Disney Plus isn't a bad set to get into because the idea of potentially opening a God pack is really fun. That's a that's a pack that has like four chases and a very rare prime figure. So... That is not a terrible set to buy from, especially if maybe you or someone in your life, you know, you know, they watch the Disney Plus shows, you really liked watching it with them, and they'd be like, oh, okay, I get it. I could see how you would come to this conclusion of getting this for me. We talked about the shows, we watch them, we enjoy them, you know, and then also it is a solid set to box for that potential God pack and getting all those chases. Another good gift that is free, may I add you, and this is to all the spouses out there. Ask them, get them a real gift, please, but asking them to teach you how to play Hero Clicks. You have no idea how many of these guys definitely want you to say play that, Hero yeah. Clicks. You're about to say that? Yeah. No, that's a really that's a really solid gift. If you got like a starter set or something and was like, well, I thought maybe you could teach me how to play, they would be over the moon to teach say, you like, how to play Hero Clicks. So, yeah, if this is like your first time listening to a podcast and for some reason you were like i really want to get a gift and you googled and this is what came up um finding a a nerdy kind of like medium that like you enjoy in hero clicks isn't hard so like if you like street fighter if you like dota 2 if you like Yu Gi Oh, um you know obviously dc marvel are the big ones uh but like lord of the rings anything like that you can definitely Get yourself some of those older figures that were like made with those in mind, like those in mind, uh, like Assassin's Creed, um, Gears of War, Gears of War like I, I don't know yeah, what Star are ladies Trek. like, uh, Star Trek, yeah, obviously, yeah. yeah, that's the one I definitely missed. Probably Star Orville. Trek. Uh, the Orville, Orville. yeah, um, <laughs> but no, there's Turtle. like a that's bunch of like indie one. sets if that's what you're into, yeah. and they like obviously have been playing the game for a little while. Um, they'll have stuff that's more aligned to like that power level so they can build a team. You can like play some of your favorite, fa- some of your favorite characters. I have a friend that like, um, their wife is like super into detective chimp, 
but like Detective Chimp only, not a, like a lot of other oh, DC stuff. Interesting. So when they play, it's Detective Chimp versus other stuff from like around that time because uh, he hasn't been made in a while. So yeah, if you if you have a specific type of you know whether it's like you really like lanterns, you really like uh, like Batman or if there's a off brand like Watchmen, like you maybe watched like you know the uh, the the movie Watchmen or series the or the yeah. movie, or like you you know watch Jonah Hex or <laughs> please oh, please if not you, uh, if you watch Jonah Hex. I'm so sorry for you. Yeah, please. Well, <laughs> even worse if if your favorite uh, comic related movie was Lone Ranger. Um, Oof. Oof. But no, like there's there's the Halo set, there's uh, Hellboy, there's a bunch of stuff that you can play around with if that was something that like you're into and you're like, yeah, I'll give these figures a try. Um, hopefully they already have like a set of figures that are about the same age. And yeah, you can definitely combine those. You can, you know, use your stuff that you get for Christmas and be like, hey, I, I bought these for me, but it's so we can play. Yeah. You could make them a really nice card or something with that too. Like that'd be really solid. Yeah. Speaking of cards, this is an easy one. Cop out gift if you would uh, a gift card to their comic book store, game store in their area. That's always good. Obviously, I prefer if you buy them anything. It is from a local store in your area. That'd be really awesome. But you can also give them a gift card or buy any of the stuff like cool stuff ink from the WizKid store from a tons of different online places, but. Definitely first, like, Google, check, search, see what the local comic store or game store is in your area before you, uh, you know, do stuff. You know, For support sure. local businesses and all that good stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you said, though, Simeon. Like, people would love this. I know I would have loved this, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, Snippy Handler was like, Yo, just teach me how to play. I'd be like, I've been waiting for this day for so long. You have no idea. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. It is an intensive yeah. game. Like, once you get into it, it's a lot easier than it looks on the surface. But it's like oh, yeah. if you're just like a board game connoisseur and you really like Sheriff of Donningham and Risk and like all these other games, Hero Clicks isn't that hard to get into. It really, really isn't. Um, no. But it does it does take a little bit more uh, planning and like prep and stuff like that than just picking a game up off the shelf and like having everything you need. It does take like the piecing out of like you know, specific figures that you like to be able to right. like form a team. Uh, another sealed product that like, if you know for sure they don't have and is great to get them would be the, the hellfire gala. So that was a quote unquote premium collection set uh, with eight figures and a brand new PAC and um, fancy little cards and a box and everything. That's like a, it's about a 60 ish on average, uh, 60 ish dollars on average little box set. And that's something if they don't already have it, um, probably make sure they like X-Men first. If they don't like X-Men, they might not want it at all. But, uh, at yeah. the very least they'll be able to trade. Like that's the other thing is, uh, if you get them sealed stuff in any capacity, they'll be able to use it to trade for other stuff. And that's something as hero clicks players. I think we all do. I think that's fairly universal is even if you're just like a tabletop player and you only trade with like the one or two guys that like come over and play with you, I think trading is fairly ubiquitous against or across the community. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Kind of shifting the focus here a little bit. That's a hero clicks pun for all those unaware. Yeah. From a uh, sealed product or just hero clicks figures to now hero clicks adjacent things know what they might want if you think they are running out of space to keep their hero clicks in and you've seen their hero clicks room and maybe you kind of see like their organizational like boxes and stuff getting some of those are cool i would fill them with something because I, I made the mistake one year i asked like for like uh glass tupperware for christmas and i i got all of that and i was like you know this is a necessary thing that i need i won't say it's a fun christmas present to open around the tree you know what i mean where it's right. like yeah i need it it's like socks Not great so it's like, it's like socks yeah yeah it's like you know i will use these a lot and i do need them but not exactly the most holly jolly in love with it so if you get them 
something like a container to put hero clicks in. Think about this. Also filling that with card sleeves. So you can go to almost any game store. They'll have a section for card sleeves. It's mostly cringy dragons. That's just kind of the way card sleeves are. I don't like them. A lot of people apparently do. But they also, there's a separate card game, not Hero Clicks, but it's called Marvel Champions. And they make, if you have a Marvel fan who's a Hero Clicks player in your life, they make a card back for basically every Marvel character. Hulk, She-Hulk specifically with like little purple gloves, Captain America, Iron Man, Captain Marvel. Basically any Marvel character you can think of, they have a card sleeve for them. I like card sleeves a lot. If they also just have a favorite movie that may not even be Heroclix related, some game stores will just have an insane amount of card sleeves. I have Army of Darkness card sleeves that I love. Ash isn't in Heroclix, but I like that I can represent that. Mega Man card sleeves. There's like Street Fighter card sleeves for the game. So if you know a couple of their interests, they can also show that off in when they play Heroclix by getting card sleeves. I won't say they're the perfect gift. Your hero who's player may not like card sleeves because there is information on the back of the card. I like them. I like forcing my opponent to have to take them out of the card sleeve. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, but it also just protects your cards. You can also get the thicker plastic uh, top loader card sleeves as well. Right. And these ones you don't really put in a deck. They're not maybe by the... They're going to be by all the other card sleeves, but... These ones are just for super keeping a card nice and yeah, pristine. There, and there are kits good. where it will have the right. the thin, flexible plastic sleeve and then also a harder like back sleeve. And uh, you can find those pretty much anywhere. The Heroclix cards, for the most part, are um, and the universal say. size. Yeah. yeah, they're like the universal like card size. So any kind of collectible card will fit like this any like sleeve or uh top loader anything like that will fit that right. size so all of those will be universal um i'll throw into that like things that people use if they don't have an organization style already like some people use uh tackle boxes or um like hardware boxes or something like that if they don't already have some sort of like set design like whatever that they store their stuff in I use the like 3,000 and 5,000 count card boxes. They're just flat cardboard boxes that you like fold and put the dividers in, and they're great at organizing Heroclix sets or just Heroclix figures in general. So if they don't already have something and they just got into the game and they're looking for a way to organize them, those are great ways to do it. It gives them plenty of opportunity to like change up what they have later on. Um, they're just plain white boxes. They cost around like five to $6 each, uh, unless you get them shipped and then like, they might have an extra like $3 tacked on to each one or something, but sure. you can find those in pretty much any store that sells cards or comic books. Uh, most stores that deal in, uh, collectible stuff have those boxes and to go along with that as well. Um, like deck boxes so like magic is a big thing uh anyone that collects enough hero clicks will eventually have enough cards for whatever reason that they need something that holds their cards so like a little deck box that holds all the cards for a certain set or for however they organize is also a great option to like keep their stuff safe in one spot yeah i know it kind of depends on their organization. A lot of people will also put cards. That's a deck box. I use a deck box. I have one long box that I use. Um, so getting them one like that is cool. Getting the ones that are meant to fit like a singular, like a deck, like a 50 count, 40 count card deck can work too. I think those are fine. Uh, people might sort by set and then put the cards in deck box like that. Probably another thing is binders. Uh, People see this a lot with like Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards and stuff where it is a almost like a school binder. But instead of paper and stuff, it is plastic sheets that you can put cards in. I know a lot of people use binders. I, again, think they are wild for doing that. But uh, I used to do that. I Man, it's takes up way too much space. Um, but <laughs> if they like binders and stuff, and I, a lot of people use no offense to you, binders, your normal listener. Um, but you can also get them a binder, or if you know if they already have a binder, you can get them. They literally sell these at Walmart, where it's like the plasticky things that are just sheets that you put in a binder. Get them a few more of those. 
space. They were running out of binder space. A binder, some plastic sheets, deck boxes. These are all really solid side gifts that complement hero clicks. I will say, if you end up buying a tackle box, make sure to steal or borrow a hero clicks figure of theirs off one of their shelves. Uh, try to find one that maybe has a white tab on it um, if you're going to borrow it, or one that just looks really dumb. Make sure you, they can fit in the tackle box. I have gotten tackle boxes right. in years past that don't even fit a modern Hero Clicks dial. So yeah. if you want to look for a Hero Clicks, look for one that's got grab, like. Yeah, grab one of the bulkier ones. Space. Yeah, grab one of the bigger Hero Clicks. You don't clicks. need, yeah, you don't need like a two by two, what we would call a two by two, which is like a, right. a really big one. But, you know, obviously, like the standard size one. Right. But like, one grab one, like of the, one of the guy. taller, more like. You know, if they've got like a big lightning thing around them or something that like might poke out, putting like one of those in a tackle box can definitely tell you like whether or not that tackle box will work for the intended use. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then as far as singles goes, um, I would normally say stay away from singles if you know for a fact that they are like really into one character and they don't have a specific figure uh if you are like this is for the more adept hero clicks purchasers uh in my opinion um the number one rule is go to ebay type the collector number in and if like if this doesn't make sense to you then just probably don't do it but type yeah. the, the collector set number in the name in into ebay with like hero clicks and then hit sold items and that will show you what you should be looking at about like roughly paying. Uh, if you go to a site and it's double or like, you know, anything like a lot more than that, there's probably a good chance that you're going to get not like taken advantage of, but you're going to yeah. overpay. And as a Heroclix collector myself, as somebody like that has had people buy Heroclix for them, there's nothing that hurts worse as far as a gift goes than knowing that somebody overpaid for a figure for me uh like yes i like the figure thank you for finding a figure that i didn't already have but like no i did not need you to buy that for me and like yeah it's just it's just rough that like somebody would uh like overspend on my account like i right. you know especially like when it's like maybe it's like a figure that like i wanted but like i was waiting on it personally you know like i had reasons or whatever um, those kind of things. And so it does, it's just, uh, it's an extra little step. It's very easy. You just go to eBay, you plug in the, you know, plug in hero clicks, you plug in the name of the figure and then their collector number, and then you hit sold as far as, uh, narrowing it down. And it's an easy way to narrow down like your search to exactly like figures that are being like sold for that price and so i think it's a necessary step if you're going to buy singles obviously again if you're buying singles make sure it's not something they already have uh, make sure it's something that they definitely want and then make sure you're not overpaying for it yeah and probably the biggest thing don't ever do this but on some websites and no offense to any of these websites that have this have little things like 100 assorted hero clicks for seventeen dollars, do not buy them. One hundred assorted hero clicks. It sounds like a great deal. Wow, a hundred hero clicks for only seventeen dollars. It's, it's actual garbage. Is what yeah. you will basically receive. It, you give them. You're gifting them a. Te uh, you're gifting them a, ta a task that they a have task. to. Yeah, organization complete. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Organize. Look through to see if anything's worth anything, and then probably get rid of the majority of it at right. the end of the day. Because, yeah, at the end of the day, a lot of Heroclix players, I'd say the majority, are collectors over anything else. And so yeah. they probably have already collected, like, those those boxes or whatever you buy, the, like, 100 assorted or, like, 10 pounds or whatever, uh, they're going to include a lot of things that they already have. And by a lot, I mean, like, 99% is going to be stuff that they already have with a small percentage being stuff that they actually want. If you've heard your Hero Clicks play in your life, talking about how they wanted to go to Florida next year, a big tournament, well, boy howdy, is there a website for you? 
For as little as $287.50, you get them the full package, dinner included, uh, for the Florida event. Now, to get them there, you can go to Delta, Allegiant, etc., and type in your home airport to Orlando. See what the flight costs. Pay for their flight. This would be a pretty uh, huge thing. Uh, uh, sorry, this is mostly a bad joke. The very expensive uh, trip, obviously, to pay for a hotel room for a few nights in Florida, and then also get them a flight, and then also pay for their tournament entry. But if you did this, you would probably be spouse of the decade. Uh, if they wanted to go to the tournament, anyways, it would be it would be pretty cool. It is something you can buy and could do uh, at house rule at houserulesgaming dot com slash catalog slash champion clicks open slash thirteen five seven one. You could do all of this. Please don't. Uh, that would be rough. <laughs> no, I. <clears throat> that's something where, like, yeah, if, if uh, you know for sure they're going to take off work or be able to take off work um, or like they're a, a more spontaneous person or something for sure. You could do that. But uh, yeah, that's definitely right. something where uh, if they haven't planned on doing it and then you suddenly spring it on them, it will right. be a little bit of a but nightmare this, uh, trying to plan around it. Last week you're able to do that. So throwing it out there, if you wanted to make a, series of big purchases uh for christmas but also hey for yourself it's a trip to disney world that's true and yeah decide to go with them and also uh, go to is, disney world yeah if they you end up the not game. wanting to play in the tournament you can at least exactly. go to disney world or see the uh florida tower i believe it's called um the thing no okay. probably not okay i'm like uh, i don't tower. think they can make anything too high because of the hurricanes <sighs> but uh no um Going back to like purchases, if you see a figure that's like, if you're just, you know, the person likes hero clicks, uh, you go and you look and you like see like this figure's one hundred and sixty dollars. That doesn't necessarily mean one that it's worth one hundred and sixty dollars just because it's listed for that. Two that they want or need that, and then three, um, that you should like buy it. Obviously, <laughs> I think that goes with one and two. But yeah, so like if you. If you're just going to drop some money on clicks, I think, as we said at the beginning, the best chance is to go with a sealed product. Uh, your second best chance going with like some sort of uh, bundle or something, but make sure that it's like stuff that they don't already own because if it's just a bundle of hero clicks and it, like this one here I'm looking at, 100 plus hero clicks bulk miniatures lot collection great army builder read description don't even bother because right. most of the time that's like that's great for somebody that's just getting into the hobby not so great for a christmas present because it will just be a huge organization mess for them and uh who knows how many of those will come to you broken and stuff like that so it's better to get them off on like the right track if they're new to the game and they're like super interested in it. And the easiest way to do that is to grab sealed stuff. And it doesn't have to be brand new sealed stuff, but make sure you're not overpaying for older sealed stuff. And again, the easiest way to do that is eBay sold to check, check the prices of like recently sold stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I think, uh, other than that, the only thing I would suggest is, um, if you're heavily into hero clicks, you should already know this, but buying your buddies a legacy card or legacy figure that they don't already have is probably like the best bet. Yeah. I think getting uh rather than getting a new figure, I'd I'd love getting like a legacy card or figure that I didn't have. Um, you know, like I have I have the legacy card, but I was like you know, telling my friend the other day, like, I have this legacy card, but man, I really wish I could get the figure for it. It's just a little out of my price range right now. And they buy that for me for Christmas, and that's a great gift. This is obviously, you know, anyone that's not in the know probably has no idea what I'm talking about. But uh, it is just a great gift if you have the figure and not the card and they get you the card, or you have the card and not the figure, and they get you the figure, 
either way, um, helping you complete the collection is really nice. Yeah, I think so. Absolutely. Really quickly, dice are a big part of hero clicks, but not the biggest part. Your hero clicks player probably already has a great amount of dice or a favorite set of dice. And most dice sets you might find are made for D&D and not hero clicks. But there are these like set of dice that if you literally just typed in like dice avatar, they are a set of like five dice. Let me see what company this is. And they do this for a ton of different they have like nightmare uh it's OP. Whatever that six is, which is what you want for hero clicks. And I've literally seen like Mickey Mouse and Friends, Avatar, Ninja Turtles. I've seen tons of them these. So honestly, if you type in dice and then whatever their interest is uh dice god of war okay yeah these do exist all right took a little bit of a minute but okay so yeah like you could basically find any set of dice you want for your hero who's player in your life by honestly just typing in dice followed by a thing they enjoy (laughs) and you'll be able to do it yeah the op accessories has a ton of these dice sets it's literally insane how many they have so these are always solid if they have a, a favorite thing, again, that's not Hero Clicks related specifically, but you use dice in Hero Clicks. These are pretty fun. And people will, I'd say people would enjoy them. So, yeah, feel free to check that out as just another side thing that kind of goes with like the card sleeves, the containers, etc., the deck boxes. And if they, maybe specifically a fan. I I will not lie. This is incredibly selfless, uh, shameless. Sorry, excuse me. Very shameless plug here. You can go to patreon.com slash dial H podcast, and you could sign them up for a few months, you know, maybe a year of the Patreon. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Just stay signed (laughs) up for as long as you want. If you're listening to this podcast, Uh, that might mean that they're listening to this podcast. Exactly. And, uh, very true. Yeah, the the Patreon the does give you it gives you access to our special Discord, which is only Patreon members. Um, allows them to ask questions immediately to us. Uh, we are quite active in it, so anything that they ask or you know if they have any questions or whatever, uh, we have a knowledgeable little group in here. And then there's also just immediate access to like us. And then there's a backlog like a decent backlog of uh, some blooper reels. And then they also get probably a week prior, like a week to to two days prior uh, access to videos that will drop. So every time we're about to drop one of our bigger videos or one of our more interesting videos, there is definitely like it's posted in Patreon or the Patreon exclusive discord. Um, prior so yeah there's a there's a lot of fun stuff in there uh videos that never make it to youtube are posted in there right True. Uh, so there's actually a, a quite a lot and then also tokens dice well we don't we don't give out dice all that stuff that often, we kind of but we about. give out we give out tokens um for bystanders and things that whiz kids doesn't give out tokens for so it's nice, like, if you have a specific figure that you like and you're planning on playing and you're like, maybe you really want to play the Rick Jones and you don't have the original tokens for him, well, you can get Dial H versions of those tokens. Hey, you join before the end of the year. I will say you get a T-shirt. twenty-five. If you join at the $25 tier or higher, you will get a Chainsaw Chip shirt. And make sure to send me the T-shirt size of who you want the shirt for. Yeah, if you get that before the end of the year, that should arrive to them sometime in January, I'd imagine. A little bit of a, a belated Christmas present as well. This would be like a side gift. For like, you know, 25 bucks, you gave them Patreon access, the Discord, to all of our free like content that's exclusive to Patreon that you can check out. I shouldn't call it free content. You do pay for it. But exclusive content that you w- otherwise wouldn't get. And then also a t-shirt and some cool tokens. No, I but definitely I think, think tokens are... That's like something we didn't quite touch on, but like dice and token packs are a thing that WizKids does. So right. if you know that they don't have a specific dice and token pack, um, you can normally find those at local game stores, maybe find them online. A lot of them sell out fairly quickly. 
But if you're like, oh, I really like the Avengers, and you want to get the Avengers Empire, like Avengers Fantastic Four Empire set tokens, uh, and they don't already have them, again, like a lot of this is legwork. You have to yes. check and see what they already have. But if you know for sure they don't already have those token packs or like the War of the Realm token packs. Well, um, although I would say, honestly, even if they don't have some of these token packs, enough of the figures that generate those tokens generate more than what's even in the token. Pack. That's true. So, yeah. On the like, flip side of a Empire, lot of these token packs are bystanders. You know, you'd probably be pretty safe. I think. I think even these last two, uh, maybe not these last two token packs, I think they do cover specifically the amount of tokens they make. But I know in Empire you can make a million Ultron Jones, and I think that one only comes with like three or four. But like that's a solid token pack to get. I think the X-Men one, because a lot of different people can make Damons, I think that's another really solid uh, yeah. token pack to get. Yeah, I think some of these token packs are really solid. Even if they may already have them, it'd still be a solid present. It's always good to check and make sure. I mean, they do I, mean, I know for them. sure that we make them. Oh yeah, so we make them. We make exactly. Damon's. So, uh, they, you want to, uh, you know, they just are. Uh, it all goes Damon back to the Patreon. From, uh, <laughs> World Police, but uh, yes, They're, we they are hilarious, Matt Damon's. <laughs> but all right, I think that will be the holiday gift guide. We hopefully kept this to around forty in it so it wasn't too much maybe you listen to this on your commute or while you're on the way to the mall or something you'll get your heroes player in your life a yeah. great gift for christmas also if you want to email the dial h for hero hooks that's dial h for hero hooks at gmail.com if you want to email us and kind of tell us about the person you're buying hero hooks for i'm sure we might be able to find some time to help you out and be sure they are getting a good present in case you wanted a little bit more help after just listening to this podcast we would absolutely love to help you and make sure that christmas is perfect this year for them yeah moving on now goodbye goodbye non-hero <laughs> yeah. players goodbye casual buying. purchasers of hero yeah. picks. hopefully you enjoyed this episode but you can you can go now you are free you are uh class dismissed all right, fellas, now that the normies are gone, let's talk about some real nerdy stuff, shall we? Scott Porter unboxed today. Okay, now that they're really gone for real, here's what I want to tell you that they, they the didn't guy know. from they're, The guy from Friday gonna... Night Lights did the thing? What? What? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? From Janine, Georgia? Yeah, yeah. Hang on, maybe I want to listen to this. What What did he oh, do? Oh, no. Oh, no. Shoot. Ah, shoot, I can't. Let him in on the secret. Yeah, you know, that's the guy right. From, he talked uh, for eight minutes about what he loves about Teen Titans Go and DC Comics before he did anything. Is oh, that what you want to listen to? Eight minutes? Is that what you want to listen to before you get to like what we're we're talking about right now? Is that yeah. why you're sticking around? Because you thought the guy from Ginny and Georgia was going to be real cool and maybe like sing? No, he sings 0% of this entire episode. That's true. No singing. No singing at all. Although I guess if you want to listen to him do a Shaggy and Scooby impression that that is part of this episode. So a one, anyways. He lets uh, I guess he's like an actor or something. He really tried. I don't know if I would have cast him as as Shaggy. You know, maybe he should be a little bit taller, a little more slender. Yeah, not quite as, the as normal that I was expecting. Yeah, not not the quite it. But uh, you know, maybe as the voice actor for Scooby, his Scooby wasn't too bad. I could see him. Doing some things in ruts, I guess, you know. Um, you know. <laughs> but all right, Simeon, so Scott Porter uh, for the normal here, who's players now. For real, for real this time. Scott Porter unboxed Batman Team Up Day 1. He teased it last week on his Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or wherever that picture came from. I don't even know. But he teased it. We went into it a little bit on the live stream, and he finally opened up the first two boosters of his brick. He did pull a super rare, which was the Green Lantern Joe Mullane. Never heard of her, but I guess she's a Green Lantern. And then he got some other really cool stuff. Things of note, there's a pretty decent mix of comic to, like, comic DC to Teen Titans Go to uh, Scooby, Scooby-Doo stuff in it. Right. And then there is also a construct, every single booster, that will take up a figure slot. Man, Most likely a, a little... common, uncommon slot, but yeah. Yeah. Every construct... You... It seems, well, from what we've seen, uh, it seems like it's going to take up a, um, 
Well, it has the rarity of a super of a super rare. rare. Yeah. But it does not take up the super rare slot as we saw with the second right. booster that he opened. So, I mean people are really angry about this. They're they're getting I think upset a little too quickly if you ask me. Again, like what Simeon said, it's probably taking up a common or uncommon slot and there's like yeah. 50 something constructs in this set that construct is going to be worth more. Like, people are complaining about, oh, is this the value to boosters when boosters are, like, $17? And I, you know, apologize. This is a little harsh to people that are having these opinions. But, yeah, this kind of is value to boosters. It's just kind of like in X of Swords in the OP kit. Most people are going to want that sword than a random common, uncommon, like, whatever figure. At the end of the day, like... If I'm still going to get, if I'm still going to get my, uh, like rare or super rare or chase, whatever, right. like the highest rarity is, and then one matters. of my commons or uncommons is taken up by a construct, uh, it's, uh, it's beneficial to me because right. one, if I'm at all a fan of like DC, which I assume I am because I'm buying DC product, uh, I want a full set of constructs so that oh, exactly. when I get one of the rings or whatever, I can use them. Uh, now that's not and saying you know, that, uh, there is no back la- like there's no, there's a strong reason why this is bad. And, uh, the obvious reason is in sealed. This yeah. will be rough because you have it's one less figure and you have no chance of like technically playing this figure because in this specific set, you have to have, the uh, objects, the ring objects. So that's the main reason why I understand like people's gripe with it. Right, I get that too. But uh, yeah, at the end of the day, yeah, you can just uh, trade these constructs Probably. out for actual figures. Like maybe somebody's missing oh. the green chainsaw and they really want yeah. it. Or, you know, they're missing the red stop sign and they really want it and you pulled it. You can trade that for like one of their rares or one of their super rares, perhaps, you know, like who knows what like you're able to trade it for. But then also on top of that, like it's a figure that like you maybe already got duplicates of, or maybe you don't want constructs at all. And every single construct you pull is going to be something tradable. That's, that's some good trade fodder right there. These constructs are, if nothing else, awesome trade fodder. Yeah. It's better than I, getting a, like, this so far we've seen one in every booster. It's better than getting a tarot card in every booster because you can't use those at all yeah, <laughs> during like, seal. You know? There there will be a period where the Wonder Woman 80th figures can use every one of these like for free. Yeah. And don't have to be equipped. And so <laughs> they will be nuts for a, like a small period of time before Wonder Woman 80th rotates. And we don't yeah. know when that will be, but I mean Probably at the least. Probably getting the axe this year. At the I feel least like. so six months July. from now. So yeah. you've got like six months of, you know, Chip being able to be a Green Lantern squirrel and equip the Red Lantern Red ring. Red Lantern ring, baby. Or like whatever else, you know. Uh, also, gotcha. like for what it's worth, the, equi- uh, the rings from this set will have different uh, constructs than Wonder Woman 80th. Right. So the Red Lantern ring is going to be able to bring in the Red Chainsaw, red lantern chainsaw. which is better than the Green Lantern Chainsaw that we've seen. Yep. Um, so just on its surface, like that's already a much better deal that you're getting there. But yeah. I think the Red Lantern ring is going to be pop dollar equipment. In, in my opinion, I think out of all the rings, if the Red Lantern, because it has the 11 attack over like the 10 attack of the green... The Red Lantern ring is going to be expensive. Because equipping that to somebody, especially in the Batman rules, of just they get to start the game equipped, just paying its point cost, no equipment dance, and all that jazz, making anybody a drop-off, like, Alpha Strike attacker for 10 points, dropping that chainsaw, are you kidding me? That is amazing. Yeah, that red ring is going to be baller. To take it back a little bit to, like, sealed and everything, I will say the biggest bummer is that he pulled a Green Lantern, he pulled a Construct, and I was really hoping that the Lanterns in this set would maybe come with their rings, or maybe maybe John Stewart comes with a ring and Joe just doesn't. 
But the fact that he pulled a Lantern, who could, in theory, make a Construct, and he pulled a Construct that could, in theory, work with that Lantern, but didn't pull, like, the missing blue, the middleman, that is, like, Green Lantern ring, is kind of a bummer, you know? Right. Like, that doesn't help it in Sealed either. I think if all the Lanterns came with their respective rings, and like I said, maybe it's just Joe doesn't, maybe uh, Jon Stewart will, or what other green lanterns they have in this set although it does bother me a little bit that those are the only two green lanterns we see on the side i am hoping we get like a kyle simon baz guy gardner yeah, we already had a certain Al, point this know? would almost be a full lantern set so i think that's true i think for some of the colors we might only get one i mean obviously larfley's sure. like the the orange lantern oh yeah there's yeah, I didn't have usually only one more than one yeah but uh, on the off chance that we get more than one, it'd be be interesting to see. I mean, obviously, I, I think the only orange lanterns that come to my mind are um, like Lex Luthor, Lex Larfley, and Larfley's. Hal Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Lex and Larfleys are really the the big two that come to my right. mind all the time uh, when I'm thinking orange lanterns. If I even like, you know, question who has been an orange lantern, those are right. the, yeah. the two that I know for sure have been, uh, but. But yeah, I agree. We want to talk about any of the figures in particular. I really like, honestly, Scott is going to make me, he's talking about Brave and the Bold, and I'm so hoping. Like, I know I know Scott also probably doesn't know what's actually in the set, but man, I hope there's stuff from Brave and the Bold in it. Like, just him, like, mentioning it makes me so wish that we are getting some, like, Brave and the Bold stuff in the set, because I mean, I've been re-watching Brave and the Bold. So I've been, Beast like, is... Oh, an obvious Man, for me like that's that'd be so hilarious that's a figure that like i've thought like this could work so well and oh, I this think could so. be like, like easily one pod. of like the best figures and like the, like one of the, not necessarily not necessarily like one of the best figures ever made but this could definitely be one of the best figures uh thematically that's like ever made um just because yeah. he's so funny in brave and the bold like it's hilarious, it's hilarious what he does. He's like, like everybody's reaction, like that's disturbing. And it's like, yeah, it is he's disturbing. like cheetah, <laughs> tarantula, fast oh, it's a, giant it's a, it's tarantula. A, it's a, <laughs> like it's what he creates. <laughs> you know, he's like a uh, yeah. blue whale bumblebee. Ah, now it's a thirteen ton like bumblebee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that like just like slams down on you. I guess I don't know. Whatever. He combines weird animals. He's a great figure. He's a great uh, or great character. And like the uh, the Music Meister episode is almost all uh, musical, and that's hilarious. I just watched the Death Race. I didn't realize Steppenwolf used to look like a silly garden gnome man. Uh, so that's what Steppenwolf looks like in all of Brave and the Bold, and it's hilarious. Yeah. Um. So yeah, no, I super dig it. I'm really hoping if we don't get Brave and the Bold stuff in this set. But again, like that Brave and the Bold uh, Scooby Doo crossover, it was Brave and the Bold Batman. So I am, I mean, I'm thinking we get. I mean, no, we saw him. We already saw him. What am I talking about? I already know this. So I am hoping that if that's maybe all we get, maybe we get a future more Brave and the Bold stuff. Maybe in the next DC sets, Brave and the Bold set, like a little animated, like TAS and stuff. Yeah, you, know, you never know. But no, Scott is going to make me probably rewatch Teen Titans because I realize I watched it as a kid, and when you watch animated shows as a kid. You don't like, oh, this is episode one, episode two. You know, you just like watch whatever's on the TV whenever you finally sit down and watch TV. You know, like you don't really watch it in perfect order. Maybe some people did. I did not. But when he was saying that like the Doom Patrol and stuff was in Teen Titans, I was like, did they? Did I? Did I just never see those episodes? Yeah, I guess. Probably. Because I don't like, remember that at all. Yeah, I don't. I was like, were they in Teen Titans? The Doom Patrol? Like, I know Hive was there and they always, and I know Slade and like messing with like, Red X and all that stuff was in it. Like I remember that, and like the stuff with like Terra, Trigon, and all the weird multicolored ravens. Like I remember most of this. I remember you know people were stealing Cyborg's car for one entire episode, and I was like, "Get him, Cyborg!" You know, like I remember this. I don't remember the Doom Patrol ever being in it. You know, like so he's probably gonna make me rewatch all of Teen Titans, and then maybe even watch some of Teen Titans Go. We'll yeah. see. At least as, the Teen Titans go to the movies because he did that. As I am to say, um, the most I know about Doom Patrol comes from the HBO series about Doom Patrol. So oh, that is I like mean, the the p- same of my 
same here. Yeah, comic knowledge for Doom like, Patrol. They seem really fun. They seem really like fun. Yeah, and, they seem they seem I mean, hilarious. I obviously like I knew about like Animal Vegetable Mineral Man before I watched the show. I did know about him too. It was like just you know like the top ten wacky comic book villains that you've never heard of, and it was like him and uh, Armless Tiger Man that would oh, always yeah. like make every single one of those lists. Right. But um, no, like that's like my extent of Doom Patrol knowledge. And while they seem really cool, like, we also saw, this wasn't, I don't think in the Scott Porter unboxing, but this was posted somewhere on Facebook. The, uh, we have the bystander for the negative spirit, which. No, that was the Scott Porter. He opened oh, was negative that the spirit and then, like, four tentacles. Yeah. And then I think there was, like, one other bystander so that I can't tentacles, remember. tentacles, I'm assuming, go to, like, an Aquaman, because we did see Aquaman at Worlds. Oh, I don't know. There there may be a little uh, Japanese culture happening in this set <laughs> that we're not prepared for. I doubt. So. I hope. Yeah, I know. Probably not. Yeah. I <laughs> probably hope not. it's just, uh, you know, <laughs> Aquaman. And or not... Black Manta. Or Black Mana. There's multiple. I mean, mm. he wouldn't really bring up tentacles. He's just I would like hope a laser not, yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe. It's not impossible. It's just... Yeah. Highly improbable. Um, you never know. You never know. <laughs> so going over figures that he actually did pull, uh, the first figure that he shows off was the Uncommon 020 Blackfire with the Teen Titans Cosmic Ruler and Warrior keywords. Real name, Comander, instead of Coriander, or whatever her sister's name is. Uh, so she has a single trait. Let me guess, truth or dare. No, not truth or dare. Let me truth guess, truth or death. Free. Choose an opposing character within range and line of fire until your next turn. That character's combat values can't be positively modified. So similar to like outsiders, but not Ooh. quite. Uh, she has hypersonic charge and invincible combat reflexes, range combat expert, shape change, and close combat expert. She gets those in the order of obviously hypersonic first. So for 100 points, you get a hypersonic 8 speed flight, 11 attack, 18 defense with invincible and three damage with ranged combat expert. So combined, she is moving eight speed, shooting three squares. So that's an 11 range with a 12 for four. Not too bad. Uh, her secondary dial, which is 50 points, starts on click four, and that is still hypersonic speed. It's a seven for 10 with a 17 invincible. But instead, she has shape change with a three damage. So you're 10 for three. She then drops down to a charge piece that's a 10 17 3 with combat reflexes with shape change. And then her last two clicks still keeps the 17 combat reflexes but gets a uh, close combat expert. So on click 6, she's an 11 for 4. And on click 7, she's a 10 for 4. And she has cosmic energy this whole time. So yeah. honestly, I mean, a I solid hope 100. Starfire also gets calm. Yeah. Solid hundred or fifty point piece, um, for this. Yeah, I will Black say, like, yeah, because they're just like reusing the same like Starfire sculpt. She looks really happy, and we all know Blackfire be the evilest, rudest yeah, woman she, in the in the universe. Not she so cruel. much chibi smile lady, right? Nah, kind of more so. Uh, she, she would like kick your dog on the way out. Like she evil. She mean. Yeah. Just, just for the awful satisfaction of it. Yeah, she's awful for the sake of being awful, kind of, you know. Uh, what's next? Oh, we get a Superman. Nobody cares. Skip, 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 skip. Uh, Red X is probably hilarious. I love his evil pizza oven thing. Uh, we have to make a token for this, for the Patreon eventually, where we, we usually make tokens and stuff. We have to make a evil wood-burning pizza oven. That is just hilarious. And this makes me want to watch more than anything this does make me want to watch whatever episode of teen titans go the evil pizza oven is in so just to read it really quickly at the beginning of the game you generate an evil pizza oven marker in a square within three squares of an opponent's starting area which is wild the evil pizza oven has characters within two squares have knockback so that's any friendly and opposing so that's interesting oh well, i guess it's not friendly or opposing to anybody but it is a, a friendly made thing at the beginning of your turn if there are more friendly standard characters than opposing standard characters within two squares, gain three mission points. I'm really curious 
if the pizza oven, because this little thing is just also on Red X, Robin style, whatever. It doesn't, it's not a special Robin, it's not a special power that Robin has. It's not a trait that he has. It's just also on his card. So I'm assuming that's just the text on the pizza oven. Could my opponent get these mission points by being within two squares of it? You know what I mean? Like, am I giving my opponent a huge lead? Like, based on how that reads, and I, I, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it is a separate text. So, yeah, it is that's specific what I'm to about. the pizza oven marker. Characters within two squares have knockback at the beginning of your turn if there are more friendly standard characters than opposing characters. I would imagine so. Because, yeah, it's not that's, specific yeah. to Red X, so it's not specific to your force. That's, that's what I'm really curious about. So, so yeah, but also... We don't have a figure that has the mission points like ability and like the text on the back. Can they gain mission? Po- you know what I mean? Like, people have already asked this with like the tarot cards and stuff. But I'm really, I am really curious about how this effect totally works. Because if it if it does work this way, it's a little scary to play Red X. Honestly, if the pizza oven's all the way over there and they're yeah. just getting mission points three at a time, like that's that's terrifying. It is a bit so, of a yeah. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Beginning of your turn. Uh, so it's at the beginning of the game, generate a pizza oven marker within a square, within three squares of an opponent area. So yeah, you really do have to kind of, three squares is pretty close. You really have to kind of carry your whole team up and kind of drop them off for this. But you do get three mission points, which is, that's more than Wrecker. That's like, you know, that's a, that's a big chunk. That's a big, um, yeah. But I also, I look at this guy and I think he works so good with current Wrecker tech. Uh, because you're already oh, carrying sure. record over, there. over to your opponent's area, um, I mean, dropping like really good with like Ultron stuff. tech, right? Like yeah. great with Ultron tech yeah. for sure. Ultron being in your opponent's starting area, depending on where they place it, like yeah, you can you can have you know some of your drones in the starting area if for whatever reason they uh, get cl- too close to this, too many people close to this, you can shove some people. Uh, it also just like forces them to go over to this marker wherever they place this marker. Right, this is a place where they're going to have to keep the majority of their field. And if you have just more figures on the board than them for whatever reason, like they have like five figures and you have like six or eight, you just have like an advantage because they're never going to be able to overpower you at that location or most of it. I mean, not in the mission point way, they might be able to overpower you like stats wise. Um, but yeah, this Red X also has a team player and super senses, which just instantly makes me think Wonder Woman team ability. So he has a 50-50 yeah. rollout. Uh, Very true. That's fair. pretty pretty solid. Uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of stuff that you'll be able to do with this guy defensively. Um, but yeah, I, I think for 60 points, he's one of the more interesting mission point figures that we've had. Just because he's like three mission points a turn. Yeah, it's really solid. That's pretty That's solid. Really good. Yeah. And he doesn't have to be up there. Like, if you want to keep Red X alive, you know, because he, he does just have super senses, you know, maybe it will be a 50 50. Maybe it doesn't even him have to be alive. Change. He, like, maybe he generates. That's the true. Pizza it oven. is just the pizza oven's effect. The pizza so... oven marker is there. So, like, yeah. I don't think there's any uh, potential swap out, like, yeah. stuff or swap in yeah. stuff. But, See like, yeah, Red like. If, if if there was, would he even have to still be on the like the right, map? Yeah, I dude, I Felicia, you know, like thanks yeah. for the PC of him. Self out now, you can die whenever it's okay. <laughs> Real quick, next up, yeah. uh, I will say the one fun thing about Superman is he has oh, Arctic no breath. Fun about it. No fun yeah. <laughs> so <Okay>. it, <laughs> uh, when he hits with a ranged attack, choose one until your next turn. Hit character can't you stop? So that's not. Uh, that is when he hits. Um, so, like, that potentially he could hit through a stop click. But then also the other option is hit character or hit target gains a mobile, which is really funny. Um, being able to, like, running shot. And then he has three dials. So this is, like, a sealed pick for sure. He has that special attack power on all of his dials. It's only the first click of his 50-point line, which starts on click six with running shot or... Uh, he on click one he starts at 150 with uh charge 10 speed 12 attack four damage with close combat expert so he's actually a 13 for four 
and he's uh, 18 defense with Invincible. And then at 75, so half the cost, he's a running shot, 11 for 4 with Leadership and that special attack power. Uh, but no, I, I do think for 75 or 50 points, being able to give somebody a mobile when you hit, pretty solid. His yeah, it's okay. He wasn't like a, a loser. Or whatever, yeah, yeah, his rally dies yeah. okay. And I mean, honestly, weird sculpt. I'm not going to lie. Weird sculpt. Uh, <laughs> I mean, just, it's just like hands on his hips. It's the same yeah. more from Wonder Woman, right? Like it's Basically, just like, yeah, whatever. His cape's doing something um, wacky, but... <laughs> like, I don't like I don't like the way that cape is looking at me. Yes. Yeah, or watch not it too bud. flappy or something. Yeah. Like, you look a little flappy over there, dude. Yeah. Uh what people really want to know is though, is uh Norval Rogers. What does Norval Sh- Rogers do? Or old Shaggy Rogers are here, old Norville Shaggy <laughs> Rogers. It's really funny. It looks like every one of the Mystery Inc. gang is getting Mystery Inc. keyword and the detective keyword, which is fitting. I assume Scooby will also get Animal Fred, potentially even Ruler. Ooh, ah, I don't know. He has a trait called taking the decoy on a leash, so it's just super senses, so he straight up has super senses. When Shaggy uses it and succeeds, this turn from the characters with the Mystery Ink keyword can use combat reflexes, so be careful who you target first with an attack, and he's also friendly to himself, so if you target him, hit him, and then the next attack, he might just have combat reflexes, which goes really well because top dial, he has three clicks of ESD. So if he hits super senses on the first attack, he now has ESD combat reflexes, and he's a 19. They are kind of doing a WWE type thing with these powers where it's like, obviously we know the WWE wrestlers are insane athletes in insane shape, but they wouldn't necessarily be able to like two tap you know, General Zod, but they they can, or some of them can anyways. They're kind of doing the thing where it's like, they're cartoons, they're silly, we're going to give them cool, fun powers and inflated stats. Otherwise, the Scooby gang would just be kind of lame, you know? Because, yeah. like... I mean, they'd either be, yeah. like, five points, six clicks long of nothing. Exactly. Or you'd have you know, a usable kind of figure that is funny people. and, like, accurate yeah. to, the, like, the show. I do like... So it's goofy, they have nice flavor uh, text. ESD is called tall and skinny. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I, I like the flavor. I like the uh, time for a liverwurst, a liverwurst sandwich a la mode, and that's his revenge. Yeah, I love it. Old dial of perplex just though. He's fifty down. points. Yeah, he's just nom nom nom. Got some elevens and twelve attacks mixed in there, which is just wild. I I think it's great. I think you know if we're gonna get regular people but they're like mainstream characters iconic characters make them pretty playable and pretty fun and they are and once we get into velma you'll kind of see that same kind of trait where they can give out stuff to each other is really really cool so i really like it i'm excited we're getting three versions of the scooby gang the chases he's like commons uncommons rares whatever and then also in the starter set so you know this Uh, is probably the only time we'll ever get them so i'm like yeah man go nuts we also does uh, oh, good. No, I, I'm just saying he does show off a Shaggy in the play at home kit. Very cute. A Scooby is the LE. We right. also get a Shaggy in the play at home kit. So I don't know if they'll work together specifically or what could be there, but I assume maybe tomorrow he'll show that off. By the time you guys are listening to this, maybe yeah, he already has thrown it off. So probably I won't go too much yeah. into it. Uh, yeah. The last thing out of the booster, and this is probably like the the thing that like yeah, I don't know. Um this is like the the lead that we buried, I guess, is these are four figure boosters with a construct right. in each, at least from what we've seen. So there was Superman, uh, Red X, Shaggy, and Blackfire were the four figures. And similar to the X-Men X of Swords organized play kit, instead of a fifth figure, they have constructs. And each construct shows... Each construct that we've seen, I guess, shows a super rare uh, tab, but it doesn't right. take up a super rare slot, from what we can tell. So the first super rare, or the for the yeah, technically the first super rare uh, construct that he pulled was the green chainsaw or chainsaw. So awesome. In quotations, green. Um, so the green chainsaw is a six speed. With flurry, a ten attack with blades, a sixteen defense with nothing, and a one damage with nothing. Uh, it doesn't have any special combat symbols, so that's just—I mean, kind of what we expected. We saw this at Worlds, so obviously this was yeah. the exact same that we saw at Worlds. 
uh, then it has the construct trait, which is immediately KO this construct if it is not within six squares of a character that generated it. Constructs do not block line of fire, do not require opposing characters to break away, and opposing characters don't stop moving when they become adjacent to a construct. Constructs can't be chosen for mastermind or have their combat values modified by other characters. So you can't perplex this guy up or anything, but he is a Green Lantern construct that, like from what we saw at Worlds, you can use the Green Lantern ring and power or free action generate this depending on your keywords. And obviously, just like the Red Lantern construct that Guy Gardner had, it can flurry blades you. And that's pretty rough. Like, yeah, I mean, we I saw that it, with yeah. Chewie. We saw that with the, the Red Lantern uh, chainsaw. Like, it's just a, it's a good combo. Flurry blades is hard to beat when it comes out for free. It really is. The next booster he gets, and we're only kind of really doing a deep, deep-ish dive because today it just happened. At next week's episode, is probably just going to be roughly going over the rest of the day. Right. We just, yeah, are, we just happened to first... be recording yeah. today when he like started unboxing. He pulls the our first green and our first super rare. We go Malane. He also pulls God. What is this? Kate Ismo, right? Then Velma, and he pulls that clay face that we saw at, like, Worlds. I believe it was, like, Worlds or Nationals. Yeah, we, we saw, saw the, clay the common pile. clay face at Worlds. Uh, is this the common? Yeah, this is the common clay yeah. face with the duplicates. Yeah. That's using the super rare sculpt from Rebirth, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure that was also a sculpt in Rebirth. But Velma's really That's cool. Similar. She she has, like, some sidestep willpower at Wit. You can tell she going to be fitting the more mystery solving that was her main role in the crew the smarter type uh, group i don't know the, the smarter character in the mystery gang but she also has a different trait similar to shaggy's where when an opposing character in range of line of fire uses probability control after resolutions you may heal a friendly character with the mystery ink keyword one click again this is a map wide effect it doesn't say it's in line of fire it doesn't say range just happens. So anytime an opposing character uses prob, you can just heal another member of Mystery Inc. one click. That's and really freaking fair, strong. That's really cool. She is eight range. Yeah, she also does have eight range. Yeah, so, true. Yeah, when an opposing character with an eight range in line of fire of her uses prob, you get a heal a Mystery Inc. character. And she uh <laughs> she starts off as just like a an attack, one damage. She goes up to a 12 for 3 Quake Battle Fury yeah. down dial. She really needs to find her freaking glasses. She her is, fumbling is yeah. just a so danger her Quake to herself is fumbling and about Her yeah. Battle Fury is quit, fo- quit your fooling around and help me find my glasses. I've never seen somebody this angry about losing their glasses that they would be a 12 for 3 and just like... Yeah. Quit fooling around and help me find my glasses and like slam their so fist funny. down. And, like everyone next to them gets <laughs> injured. It is pretty funny. I, I love it. It's it's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, she has that with her super senses. Is that you, Shaggy? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. I don't even know who's um, next to me, but I am mad that oh nobody's boy, yeah. helping me find my glasses. I also really like Gizmo. Gizmo was always one of the fun villains in the original Teen Titans because him and Cyborg were always like at odds with each other despite the fact gizmo is like 12 or like whatever you know he's super young little prodigy gizmo's fun when an opposing character heals after resolutions you get to heal him one click that's also just like a map wide effect he has like six clicks of life yeah he's a teen titans go figure i think it really works for gizmo because he's always was just kind of goofy looking in original titans anyways so it's really funny he just also has a bunch of other stuff. What is this? Leadership outwit, top dial, and he's 50 points. There's, you know, say what you will about how tough it's going to be to build and sealed. So far, maybe with yeah. no crazy low point figures, we're getting, you know, 50. That Superman was 150. That Superman that was 50. solid for 150, but the second booster has a, uh, a, a solid amount outwit. of stuff, though. An outwit whatever piece. Outwit leadership, 50 points. Yeah, you like know? Velma's Six outwit. Superman punch. can't also, one yeah, shot her. She is an outwit. She becomes a you 12 know? for three. And then That's Gizmo wild. also has outwit. So it's like, is that Superman going to be able to like carry you through? There's Probably just, not. There's a lot of just 50 point ish figures. There's not much lower than that. It's so like, unlike Fufo, where even in Future Foundation, you got a full five figures. 
you still couldn't make a 300 point team because of all the dang like sidekicks and stuff. So I think and we haven't seen any generics yet. So maybe there are, maybe there aren't, but maybe that is even to the benefit of at least this set in sealed because, okay, we're not getting a fifth figure, but all the figures in this set are pretty easy to build with. They're at 50 to 60 point values. You know, Joe is 75 Superman 150. You know what I mean? Like we are going to have enough points to fill out a team. A really easy way to make that fifth slot in the booster work is you say in sealed you get to just play it as if it were like generated at the beginning of the game that's another thing to do so just, yeah yeah very true you very, just like place easy. it and like don't ko it because nobody uh nobody technically generated the construct right so since the character doesn't generate it if you just say at the beginning of the game like it's generated for your team or those the two that you pulled if you're doing two boosters. Um, now, obviously that'll give some people a better advantage than others, right? but that's a way that you can like utilize the whole booster without, because as we see, I like forward, that idea. Um, there is no way to utilize the two uh, constructs that he pulls. Yeah, it's really, it's really rough. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Gizmo gets flurry blades, uh, barrier outwit, on his bottom dial, so it's a full dial outwit and kind of a crazy bottom dial for damage output, um, at he least is. for his, you know, 50-point line that he has. Uh, next up, we already saw him at Worlds, but it's Clayface. He has shape change. When he uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, you can make a Clayface duplicate bystander. The Clayface duplicate bystander has the exact same stats as Clayface on clicks five through seven so his last three clicks are the same as his bystander which i find cool because even though you're not technically bringing in another like clay face it's not like avengers forever where you're bringing in a secondary character if you pull multiples of this common you can use the other ones for his bystanders so they're a zero point bystander but they have plasticity invuln three damage ten attack the only difference is the actual Clayface has shape change and the bystanders do not. That is his special damage power, his whole dial, um, and it's protected outwit. So he does have Batman enemy. Uh, the bystanders also have Batman enemy. So even though they're a 10, if you have a Clayface on top dial, he is an 11. So he can share that 11 to the 10 attack bystanders. Uh, it's pretty cool. This is the first common villain uh or like not yeah whatever villain i guess technically blackfire is a villain but uh this I is mean, the yeah, first yeah. common like batman centric villain i should say uh that we saw and we saw him at worlds but he's only 50 points he's a he's a heck of a sealed pull um because even though you can use multiples to show off his duplicates they're technically bystanders, so you can use anything to show those, and like he just keeps generating them. There's no max to how many he can generate. So if you keep hitting shape change, he keeps spitting these out, and they all have plasticity invuln, so your opponent has to focus on dealing them at least three damage or outwitting them potentially. Yeah. No, he's solid. I think it's Clayface. I don't have I don't have much to say about him. Sorry, I'm just like, uh, eh, you know. Yeah, we, we know this dude. Him, we know so. this dude. We've seen him. You know, full dial of invulnerability. I do super dig. I think this is going to be a fun battle royale set. If how much the mystery gang cost this guy full dial of invulnerability plasticity is nasty in a br. You no, know, we we're already kind of used to four person battle royals with the uh, X of Swords set. So I kind of I'm not I kind of dig it. Joe is cool. I don't know who she is, but she is pretty neat. She hits pretty hard. So she is traded when she uses willpower and succeeds on a roll of a six. You heal her one click, which is really good. She has charged flurry plasticity, in my opinion. A bit more of a guy gardener power, but okay, Joe, okay. And then she has a stop invincible click, which also gives her the colossal damage symbol on her last two clicks, where she gets hypersonic speed, close combat expert, and penetrating psychic blast. Like she gets beefed up. That is, you just started a nerd fight defense, special defense power. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really love characters. Like she also has like a defense where it's like, a, let's see whether a lifetime of video games pays off. Like I'm, I'm not really into characters that are like self inserts, like nerd characters. I'm more interested in 
just superheroes doing superhero things. They don't actually have to literally be me and play video games and be nerds. I'm cool if they aren't, and they're just their own unique character. Not for me, but uh, as a figure, I mean, she's very solid. I would like to pull her in sealed. Are you kidding me? A charge flurry plasticity piece that has double stop clicks at the end. I will say, really light on the defense, which is kind of nice that she gets stop invincible on her last two clicks, because she is just, like, super senses. She does have, like, the healing and all that stuff. Uh, I will say, the Green Lantern ring, I assume, gives will... Did we see it? Does it give willpower? Because she doesn't have it on dial. So, I assume the green ring gives willpower plus the ability to make... It does, yeah. Unstruck? It does? Okay, yeah, yeah I couldn't so remember, honestly. Green, I just looked at it day because um because of this unboxing so the green lantern ring is let me pull it back up just so i don't get it wrong um it is willpower and then a plus one okay so yeah willpower characters that can already use willpower that when they use it increase the result by plus one Power, if no construct generated by this character was on your force this turn, generate a green construct that hasn't been generated by this character this game. So constructs, that's something to know is going forward, constructs can only be generated once. So it's not an infinite chainsaw or infinite green glove unless they're from Wonder Woman 80th. If this character has a listed keyword or has, yeah, has a listed keyword, which for the green ring, uh, this is the one we saw at Worlds. We haven't seen one, any of the other ones, but I assume they'll be similar. Maybe just not willpower. They'll have something else. Uh, so if this character has a listed keyword, the power effect is activated as free instead. So that would be free if no construct generated by this character was on your force this turn, which means uh, you can generate like a chainsaw moves six squares away after using it, and then next turn free. Or wait, no. This character was on... No construct generated by this character was on your force this turn. So yeah, your construct would have to die between the turn where you generate it and the next turn where you could potentially generate it. But yeah, Green Lanterns, uh, for the Green Lantern Ring, get to use the Green Lantern Ring construct for free so they can make free constructs. They can go through the whole gamut of them. Uh, obviously... Characters like Green Lantern, like how Jordan from Wonder Woman 80th can just keep making the boxing glove, or not boxing glove, the uh, catcher's mitt, or the spotlight, or, I mean, obviously, I, th I think they can actually make, like, the chainsaw over and over again. So Wonder Woman 80th actually gets, like, a huge boost because of, like, the abilities that they have. Um, the lantern rings do give them the extra stuff where, like, this character can use willpower when they already or when they already have willpower they increase the result by plus 1 that's obviously a boost the one downside right. is you only get to make each construct once per game so once per game right. and if there's no construct on the map so if you make like chainsaw and then for whatever reason your opponent just ignores it and like moves away from it um then like that's you it. can't make another <laughs> yep. construct yeah you're just stuck with that thing uh, well, you can make, you can move away from it, and you can be like, "All right, see you, dude." Yeah, yeah, you can yeah, as well. Be outside of its six, and then I think, yeah, obviously, I think the uh, the the violet fire hydrant that Scott pulled will also come in green. I think all of these constructs are going to come in every color and work the exact same. Uh, the hydrant is free. Remove up to two hindering block, hindering or blocking terrain markers within six squares and line of fire. It's a standard-sized <laughs> character. Obviously, it has the construct trait, which is, you know, opposing characters don't have to break away. They don't not draw a line of fire through it. It doesn't act like a normal character for all intents and purposes. But it is a 17 invuln, so it is hard to get rid of it. And free remove up to two hindering or blocking terrain markers within six squares is pretty solid. That's, de like, that's oh, enough yeah. to clear a path through... 90% of like the barrier tech out there you'd have to be like Molecule Man and Marvella doing barrier you'd have to be three barriers deep to not have a singular path available whatever anybody's favorite color or lantern thing is going to be I almost imagine going to see rock a ring on every single team if not just freaking uh, just for this like 
just for the lantern, just for the uh, fire hydrant. Yeah, it's, fire it's just so good. solid. It's fire so solid. Is literally so insanely good. And once you say anybody can have it, oh, it's it's over. It's Pretend, all over. Yeah, I mean, if the ring we saw at Worlds is anything to go off of, it's going to be ten points to equip to anybody. Yeah. And so, yeah, like doesn't matter what color whatever color like suits you best you no know, if you want yeah. willpower or, or if you effect, want like you know whatever maybe effect battle you really fury, like. Or, like who knows what the other rings do uh right. battle fury perplex like who knows that's the kind of stuff that we saw in or i guess poison would be like red lantern that we saw um but those combined with you know somebody that wants to move up and then free remove two barriers absolutely this is going to be used that's that's so good. Yeah. For I, 10 absolutely. Points. Yeah. All right. That's pretty much the Batman team up set day one for Scott Porter. We already talked about like the dice and tokens and all that jazz. So yeah, we'll, we'll get you back next week. Start of next week. We'll go over the rest of it, but yeah. let's go ahead and move into some, ah, some listener questions. There are dozens of us. Last thing I'll say about that unboxing. Scott kept t- taking sips out of the mug that he had when he clearly had a Batman glass filled with a liquid. Now it's like cloudy, so maybe it's not water, but what was Well, so in the, the mug, mug, I think he said it was like peppermint coffee or something. Something mm, like that, I think. Sure. And then I assume the Batman mug is his go to crystal pep or whatever. <laughs> Even though Crystal Pepsi is so gross, and I don't <laughs> Crystal, don't get how he does it. Crystal Pepsi that he found in a abandoned Sam's Club from like fifty years ago. Yeah, I don't know how he still has so much of it, but I assume that's what it is. This man has disgusting amounts of Crystal Pepsi stored somewhere on his property. At Hyper RG, RPG RC, which was oh my actual God. crystals, just yeah. physical crystals that you had to eat to get Gosh, the flavor of RC. Ar, 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 ar. Some of the worst garbage in the universe. Uh, but hey, speaking of the Batman set, I can't even remember if... Oh, we did answer some of these. Okay, goodness gracious. I think we're at November 28th. Does this seem right? I think we already answered the dice question from Alex over here. Yes. Yeah, sure. So I think what if Heroclix had chess timers? Is that what we need to answer uh, now? No. I th- well, we answered that one? I honestly I feel like we talked about it, but... I feel like we talked about it because I did mention how okay, then I think we, uh, did. we were going to potentially do to a... I don't know if this was only discussion with you, so we can go over it real quick. Uh, sure. Alex asked, how would you feel about Heroclix had chess timers? Rather than a 50-minute round, each player gets 25 minutes. And if you play until either one force is KO'd or both players are out of time, once one player runs out of time, they stop getting to take game actions other than to remind their opponent of triggered abilities caused by the actions their opponent's taking. So you can still roll super senses, yeah. shape change, etc., like prob, things like that. Um, the player with time left would be able to continue taking their own turns until either the KO... I, gotta... I don't think we did answer this, so... Uh, I don't think so. Player... I gotta say, I don't like the idea that once I run out of time... Yeah. I, I don't just, like I that. Turns and my opponent can take multiple turns in a row. I would say once either one of us runs out of time, right. maybe your opponent takes another turn. I feel afterward. like this would limit um, higher, like higher uh, force teams, like teams with like eight people oh, yeah. or something like that. Like, you know, really uh, like Doctor Strange or not. Is it Doctor Strange? Loki? The Lokis Loki, and Dr. Fates. Fate. Yeah. yeah. Uh, those kind of like teams I feel like would be limited. Um, but yeah, the player with time left would be able to continue taking their own turns until either the KO the rest of the opponent's team or their own time finishes, at which point we'd look at points as the tiebreaker. I feel like this would work if, if both people know on the offset that this is like the potential outcome, they're both going to work faster towards like KOing stuff. And then if I decide to turtle up for the last couple minutes, um, I have to like take my turn really quick. I have to be like barrier and then pass. What I think the problem would be is like the turtling techniques as of right now are already very efficient time wise. So I would end up with more time than my opponent because my turn would be like, uh, like Marvella barriers, other Marvella barriers pass barriers come down. Um, molecule man, like smoke cloud roll for barrier. 
I get three squares barrier because that's how he works now. And then Marvella pass, and then like you know rinse and repeat. I'd have like one Marvella, one like Molecumon. If I'm like doing a heavy barrier tech kind of thing, it wouldn't be hard for me to just keep turtling with this. Uh, we did. So this is why I thought we had discussed this question because um, we had discussed the uh, the uh, chess clocks because we did at one point think about trying to implement chess clocks into like a um, what was the name? Oh of yeah, the uh, a click busters. That's yeah, right. Click busters. Yeah, and then we totally yeah we that. we realized very quickly uh, after like thinking about like the how we would do it or whatever. We realized very quickly that we're just not slow players. Like we, like me and Calder right. both just take our turns very quickly and like get right up in our opponent's face. And then we don't like run away or anything when we're ahead on points. So none of this would quite apply to us in the way that uh, would actually make sense for Heroclix as a whole. So there's no way for us to quite play that way. Um, we could try and do like a clicks busters thing where one of us is ahead in points and we try and do like a keep away game or something while there's like yeah. time on the clock. But like that's, Close. that's, it's just counterproductive or counterintuitive to like how we play. Like truly, like I don't even say that as like a diss on people that play that way. I just can't physically do it. Like I have a hard time oh, not engaging with my opponent. Um, okay people that take zero zero losses i'm like i don't know how you enjoy this game if you're willing to take a zero zero loss because never once in my entire hero clicks career have i one given zero points to my opponent and two gotten zero points from my opponent like there's never been a single game where i was completely shut out or right. where my opponent was completely shut out which is weird but that's just how it is yeah I would like to see if someone does run a tournament and they implement chess clocks. I know we talked about this forever ago in like a Thread Dead Redemption because some dude on Reddit was talking about the chess timers they used. And I even asked him a ton of questions on there. He never got back to me, which is a real shame. But I know we talked a little bit about it. I would be curious to see what it would be like if your hooks had chess timers. And I think going forward, it could honestly be a thing. I just today watched a... I first ever watched a chess boxing match to finally see how like that worked. And I was very interested. I was like, oh, okay, this is really cool. Um, high production value. And I would totally be down to see both commentary on boxing and hero clicks at the same time it would be hilarious. So you could see it. I don't know. I The idea is cool. I honestly, the amount of times I've had to go to the bathroom and been like, whatever, let my clock run, you know? Because people have, I've seen people do that in tournaments before, have to use the bathroom during a game, which usually, hey yeah, guys, go to the bathroom between rounds. And you know what happens. It's natural, it's, it's more human beings. And the judge, they call a judge over and they're like, can you stop the time? And I think it's really rough that individual games don't have individual timers, but again, it can't, because you're going to hold up the entire day if we did that. You know, I know some people say other tournaments do and blah, 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 blah. But like at Hero Clicks, we, I mean, we're not going to do that. It's going to hold up literally everybody if one game takes longer to finish than the other ones. You know, it already does naturally, I guess. But and there's a set time where everybody has to stop. But I don't know. I would like the idea where it's like, all right, fine. It's my turn. I got to go to the bathroom. Keep my clock run. You know, like, who cares? It'd be kind of funny. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's all I got to say as far as clock thing goes i think it'd be interesting and i'd like to see it implemented maybe in a few say, places like, yeah just because it doesn't work quite for us doesn't mean that it wouldn't be like a good right. idea and i i am interested because if you if you're going into the tournament knowing that once you run out of time like you're obviously not going to stall for time so you have to yeah, take exactly. your turn like faster are you, people going to play like less complex but like yeah. barrier piece kind of like stuff you're gonna play I love like the no... idea of no more slow playing because it only hurts you that right. part i do i love punishing a slow player and who gets punished you not your opponent that is awesome well and like, I love i've seen that. i've seen tournaments or like yeah i mean yeah tournaments i've seen uh like whiz kid opens where it'll be sides that pass sides that pass and it's like obviously they're not giving up much time but at the same time, like there will be one of them, if they choose to go down that route, there will eventually be one of them that has time when the other one doesn't, and they'll have an opening to make an attack. So are you willing to go like 45, 50 minutes of 
uh, not engaging, not attacking your opponent, and potentially them having like five seconds left on the clock to declare like running shot, energy explosion or something. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think it'd be something worth looking into. I think we, I don't know how to implement it the best, but I definitely think it'd be fun to do like, I mean, especially like an online tournament at some point with it. It would just be, yeah. you need like a judge to manhandle each clock, I guess. Yeah. I mean, to keep track of everything. Yeah, I guess you definitely need it. Chance asks, I don't even know if I want to say, it. do you think in Batman team up, we'll get the Gotham city Israel keyword? I Is you know thing. Maybe it is. is that just a I will thing? say this: if that's a reference to like Green Lantern Temple, like the Green Arrow Templar and all that stuff, they did have Gotham City, not Gotham City Israel. If this is like actually a thing, I don't know. Um, but if it's in uh, reference to like that, then they just had Gotham City. That's all I could. You also googling it? There's right? a Gotham Street in England. Okay, which is interesting. Um. Twin city of Gotham's city in Israel today. This is a weird article. <laughs> hey, I'm not even going to read this article. Okay. Uh, Batman right. in shock. This is the twin city of Gotham city, Israel today, uh, posted on news. Um, dot com. All right. I guess well, I'm going to go be careful when it, Googling <laughs> Gotham city, Israel. Uh, yeah. Tyler M asks, with Bombastic Bagman coming in the Spider-Man set, will he let the Fantastic Four have the Spider-Man family keyword? Ooh. And how long until all keywords are merged into Spider-Man family? Fantastic Four already has a great keyword cheating mechanic with the Fantastic Four swap. I We do know that there's a ba Bombastic Bagman. We saw his sculpt. Um, if he does give all Fantastic Four keyword the Spider-Man family, I mean, at this point, there's already like scientists have the Spider-Man family keyword. It'd be wild. I mean, I, is it as wild as something like um, like Latveria past Avengers and future all getting the same keyword or whatever it is that Morgan Le Fay did? Probably not. Oh, true. That was probably like one of the wildest combos. But um, yeah, definitely be wild giving Fantastic Four that extra power boost. Even though they are going to rotate some Fantastic Four in the coming months, I guess. I don't. I mean, that was a wild one, but no one really used. Poor, poor Morgan Le Fay, so unused her character cheating. Oh, it, get, it definitely got cheating. used. Just, I mean, definitely not, not time, even like close to happened. half as much as Spider Man Family. No, yeah, she, she, yeah, she got used like a lot online prior to. Uh, like in tournament play happening again. And then once in tournament play was happening again, it was like, eh, no one was running her. To be fair, Doom Swap alone is still a like one of the top swaps in my opinion. And that's just like the whatever six, eight chases that there are of Dooms. That is hilarious. And that does work actually crazy well. As again. Yeah, uh, what would you call it? Utility of each like Doom, not yeah. every Doom, but I mean, like, just, they all yeah, the, like, the work so well together. Swiss Army knife that they allow you, or like it's not even Swiss Army knife; it's more so just like counters. You know, you have you have the Doom that prevents your opponent from making bystanders. You have the Doom that prevents your opponent from taking more than three actions. That's true. Yeah, I'd say it is yeah. more counters than yeah. it is any. You have the timetable Doom that just. He gives you uh, rollouts and, or not rollouts, but he gives you like dice swap and the potential where he just like does not die the first time he gets attacked. Um, yeah, it's, there's quite a like a decent amount of them. I think it was like probably at least five are really worth playing. And like maybe, yeah. you know, maybe people play more, but there's definitely at least, f or probably people play less. Uh, but there's definitely at least five that are worth like looking at for every team. I always started with the DJ Doom, as they call him, 062, I mean, the time platform. Probably one of the most solid ones to start with if you're yeah. not doing the whole, you know, Annihilating Conqueror cheating keyword at thing. At the very least, he gets to roll for his dice um, and like keep those dice and his time platform. Then there's Lord Doom is the one that prevents bystanders, and he's just like a solid full speed charge piece. Uh, Doctor Doom, Sorcerer Supreme. Don't see him get played very often, but he's once per attack. You may re-roll the attack for a character within range in line of fire. He also has uh, 
when an opposing character this one almost never happens but when an opposing character is turned to its starting click this game after resolutions roll a d6 and heal doom the sorcerer supreme equal to half the result i've never once seen that happen but that is a trait that he has it's more so just the prob that is like an infinite prob it's once per attack you may re-roll the attack so you can if you have like five characters with flurry you get a re-roll every attack that they make if you want because it's not considered prob it's just yeah um all caps doom that's the one i was forgetting yeah uh flurry and then power action make three close attacks and then also each time all caps doom hits with a close attack modify targets defense minus one this turn he's Uh, he's got battle fury his whole dial and then he's also got opposing forces can't take more than more costed actions each turn than one per 100 points of the build total so it doesn't care about their leadership Ah. or anything and then just also just decimates or autonomous autonomous is still a ever yeah an action that you take and oh and then uh it just doesn't count against your action total still a cost annihilating conquer during force construction friendly keywords or friendly characters with the cosmic future past keywords gain latveria so there's the other i forgot about him with the uh yeah it's true so is he the one that works with morgan lefay so he does oh, cosmic future and past so? game Latveria. Well, she just gives Latveria gives... to Avengers, right? So yeah, yeah. So it's, that would work together. That's the one I was thinking of. That's the the two punch combo is Morgan Le Fay and Annihilating Conqueror. Yeah. So it's Avengers Latveria and then Cosmic Future Past all combo together. Um, and obviously, you could probably find more from future and past than you can from latveria but avengers always has a super solid celebrity soldier ruler also warrior bruce you know like spider but like spider-man family though avenger i mean soldier ruler warrior martial artist no scientist root war like all this stuff like throwing fantastic four maybe spidey's even even more yeah robot so yeah see we'll see what spidey ends up doing i hope he doesn't just Fantastic Four Spider Man. Oh, I just, I would you know? love if he just did exactly what the previous one did. What he used to do? The, yeah. The kick me sign or whatever. So that would be like awesome. You, you take the amount of damage that you dealt him. Like, that's all I really need from him. All right. Next up, we have Ben Jones, Prime Swordsman. Looks like a fun figure to play. What would you build for Modern or Silver Team using him? You know, I'm going to give you a broad one because I didn't plan for this question. I apologize. But looking at Swordsman. He's got my favorite keyword, well, second favorite keyword. He's got the Avengers keyword, and his whole uh, repose uh, swordsman skills ability is he has super senses, succeeds on a 4 through 6. When him and our adjacent friendly character is missed by a close attack, after resolutions, deal the attacker one penetrating damage. That plus his Avengers keyword, to me, adds up to him being paired with the War of the Realms Black Widow to give him stealth, because he has combat reflexes but doesn't have stealth. So now they have to be targeted by close attacks, right? And then you also pair him with the Spider-Man from the same set, the Miles Morales, and he gives everybody super senses. So now they have to be targeted by close, right, stealth. Now they also have super senses, so there's another way for them to be missed by the attack. And I think that's a really good way to make his whole swordsman skills trait pop off. But obviously, this is the green plant guy swordsman, so if you also just want to run him with, like, Koya, that's also really solid. Yeah. I don't know about maybe competitive with him as far as primes goes. He's definitely not the prime you probably want on a competitive team. He's, but I think no, for like fun uh, fun teams, I think this is a fun one. He's a wonky prime. Um, yeah, so like if I was building with him, I'd obviously start with Koya and then start like it'd be Koya then Swordsman and like depending on what you put them at, that's almost your whole team at 300 points. Uh, Koya has at the beginning of your turn generate a Kotati plant hindering terrain marker within six squares so it's not dependent on a leadership role or anything like that uh you then after pl- placing one you count the number of kotati plant markers and perform the listed effects if you have two or more so by turn two you have two or more you generate a kotati warrior bystander max four uh if you have four or more until your next turn koya and kotati warrior bystanders occupying or adjacent to one or more kotati plant markers modify attack and defense plus one and that's going to be on top of the friendly bystanders within range modify attack plus one 
and then friendly characters named Koya on the map, friendly bystanders within a range, modify defense plus one. So they're getting a plus one attack and defense from Swordsman, and then they're also getting a uh, plus one attack and defense from Koya himself. So uh, then he gives out regen on click six and then starts dealing unavoidable damage to adjacent opposing characters on, uh, well, not on click six, on by the time he's got eight of these markers out. Um, so the two of them together are only 140 points. Obviously, like, the thing that I would want to play the most with this would be, like, a prime, I don't know, uh, wrecker, except... I don't hear any keywords. Yeah. That's, like, the well, roughest it doesn't, thing. it doesn't even he's matter. Also, because he's also prime. prime. You're yeah. right. Yep, but, prime. no, it would, it would mostly just be because uh, uh, the first trade on Swordsman, friendly bystands within range, modify attack one. But that would be my main thing that I build around is the fact that I'm boosting all bystanders within range by plus one, and then with Koya on the map, they're modifying defense. So not only am I modifying the ones that Koya makes, but literally any other bystanders that I make. Uh, so if I want to go with like the Wonder Woman 80th or the Batman team up like constructs, those are technically bystanders. So they technically put the plus one. Yeah, well, they won't get a modifier because they can only be modified by themselves. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's another modified. bummer thing. That is. I like. I saw true. Warrior, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could put him with Guy Gardner." But I'm like, no, that doesn't even matter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. Let's see. With Cosmic, man, there's there's not a lot to work with as far as uh, bystanders go, but there is like, uh, well, like Saturnine makes the uh, Captain Britain bystanders. Um, I think as far as ruler goes, you can put. Uh, a fairly easy and like well played one you can do um you can do like either apocalypse but obviously like the legacy apocalypse is bystanders get a pretty decent boost with like the plus one attack and defense and then also um you've got like annihilation who spits out the daemon bystanders so there's like a ton of stuff if you want to try and get competitive with it uh obviously like koya and swordsman is like half your build almost. And then you right. throw in like a hundred point apocalypse and you only have 10 points left over. So you're doing like equipment for one of them. Uh, at that point, Koya is probably the one that you want to protect more than swordsman because he's only at 40 points. Uh, casually, honestly, you just play Koya at 200 points and you play swordsman at like 70 or whatever his top dial is. And uh, at yeah, 75, so 75 and 200, and you're only 25 points away from 300, you can just pick anything that's either 125 points or 25 points to fill in the gap, and those two will do plenty of work themselves casually. Um, I wouldn't even feel I wouldn't even feel like guilty if like that team did really well casually, because uh, Koi is not much to speak of competitively, and uh, yeah, Swordsman's exactly. definitely like an easy target. So the two of them combined, like, they might do a lot of work if you get lucky. They might just get, like, one-shotted if you get really unlucky. Uh, but either way, I've I've enjoyed playing Koya a lot. I think he's one of, like, my favorite bystander generators. Um, obviously, going forward, we might see some changes to his, his little uh, terrain markers that he places. Because uh, there are going to be characters that can get rid of terrain. But it is hindering terrain, so who knows? We don't have the rules that come out in Spider-Man yet, so oh, it's true. all speculation. Right, Luke asks, you could will one live-action Batman movie in Netflix existence as its very own set. Which movie would you choose, and why is it Batman and Robin? Ironically, Luke, that would probably be my choice, is Batman and Robin. That was my favorite Batman movie as a kid growing up. Made me love Arnold Schwarzenegger. Made Mr. Freeze my favorite Batman villain. And it gives you a decent amount of goons, you know? Different uh, different people in the movie. It gives you Batman, gives you Robin, gives you Batgirl, gives you Poison Ivy. You, Mr. Freeze, a you know, we finally get Arnold Schwarzenegger into Hero Clicks. We get Uma Thurman in Hero Clicks for those that were asking, uh, as well as George Clooney for those that were yeah. asking. Uh, <laughs> like, 
I, I love it. I really do. I love that movie. I think it's hilarious. It's awesome. Like we get a, a get a Batman with a bat credit card ability. Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's let's do it. The bat credit card yeah. goes hard. Put it on my bat. I wish I had one, dude. It's so it's awesome. It's beyond like, platinum, it's bat. bat. Oh yeah. whoa! I don't weird. want to mess with this guy. Yeah, the worst part of that is like that would instantly tell some like I, I mean probably like a few hundred people who he was. Oh yeah, Bane. Freaking Bane is in it. Yeah, like yeah, let's go. I completely forgot. We get like more classic huge door looking Bane. Absolutely. Freaking, yeah, of course it's Batman and Robin. If there's any other better choice for live action Batman movie to get made into Hero Clicks. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Batmobile I mean, plus the Batwing. We already oh, yeah. got, uh, I mean, a, a version of the Batman v Superman set. So right. we already have those characters. And technically we already have the Dark Knight Rises. You know, yeah. we already have I, that we Bane. Have we have that Joker. Tab at Bane and uh, that Batman stuff. Also, like, we also have already have, like, that Joker. You know, we already have Heath Ledger Joker in Hero yeah. Clicks. We already have Christian Bale Batman. So we're good. Good. We already have, yeah, that Batman. I think I'm going to choose the one from this year. I mean, no. But I'd be okay with an LE version of the one from this year with his Batmobile. That would be really cool. Yeah, Not I, a set, this is prime set to be made right here. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. I'll just because I can't really go with a different one. Uh, I'm not going with like Val Kilmer. Um, so just yeah. I'm like, yeah, I, as much as I want, like, uh, what's his name? Joker. Um, Jack Nicholson Joker. Yeah. As, as much as I want Jack Nicholson Joker with his 12 foot long barrel. Um, oh, that revolver. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. As much as I want that, I I will go with the Robert Robert Paulson, Jesus, Robert Patterson, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Robert Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the the Twilight guy. I'll go with him. Uh, his new Batman take. Um, I like it. I like it so far, and I've seen some trailers yeah. for upcoming stuff that he's doing, where he like is talking to the Joker and some stuff like that. I like how they're going with like the more gritty. I mean, like, obviously the the Nolan version was, like, gritty. But this is, like, a much more realism gritty kind of this where it's, like, you know, he might bounce off of a wall accidentally because he's human. He's not the perfect man. You know, he's not, like, always right. uh, hitting his grapple hook perfectly where it needs to be and stuff like that. And I think that's cool. Like, that's something that I really enjoyed about the uh, – that like the first vi- version that we saw and I'm looking forward to seeing like what they do with the updated version where he's a little bit more experienced and he's confronting some different villains this time around. You know, I did really like it, but when you say as a hero click set, I'm just like, get as many people. You know what I mean, that's true. But There's, I would yeah, like, there really it. isn't they like did a fast forces, a lot you of know, characters. Like, yeah. I mean, if they did like a fast forces with this or some kind of like special starter where it's like the Batmobile, Penguin, Commissioner Gordon, Riddler, Batwoman, Batman. No, I guess it's five figure plus, you know, six Batmobile. Yeah. If they did some kind of special fast forces or something like that, a movie box set, sort of a bigger version of what they did for Arrow, you know, where it was like Diggle and Arrow and stuff, like that would be really awesome. I would I, mean, I would love that. If we did really Batman sweet. Forever, not only my favorite Batmobile but we also get Tommy Lee Jones as Two Face and we get Jim Carrey ah, as the Riddler. And get some of the goofiest, most hilarious versions of these characters. And I like it. You know, people can hate on the the nineties ish Batman movies. They're it's, like goofy. It's bad. That's why they're awesome. Oh, they're bad movies it's bad for sure. In like a real but fun like, way. It's ridiculously fun and hilarious. Love it. Do you Love know what's so killed much. the dinosaurs? The Ice Age. Ice Age. Yeah. Oh man, Mr. Freeze goes so hard. So like, many good one liners from Mr. Freeze. Oh good. Oh my gosh, like, yeah, Batman and Robin is off. I, lo- I love that movie. It's time to chill out. Need a cold shoulder. Oh, <laughs> like it's so good. It's so freaking uh, funny. When, he, when, like, when have we seen a good Mr. Ivy? Freeze, like, other than Schwarzenegger, when have we seen a good Mr. Freeze in live he, action? Well, he's, like, the only live action Mr. Freeze. Is he? Besides, potentially, yeah, I... in, like, Gotham, they might have had some crap version of Mr. Freeze, but, like, in a movie, this is the only live action Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger is 
or Mr. Freeze. You know? Yeah. Like that's just that's just period. And I would love it. I think Mr. Freeze would work really well in a in a Robert Pattinson Batman movie. Yeah, I really just don't want them to do the Joker. We've had this. God, man. I think the only way they could top it is if Jamie Foxx played Mr. Freeze. Oh, my gosh. Please. Yes. Jamie Foxx as the bald villain. I think he does a really good job. Yeah, you think as a bald, as a bald, if he's like a nerdy, balding friend of Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And Bruce Wayne, like, accidentally bumps into him and remembers his name or whatever. And then. He accidentally falls into a pool with uh, eels ice. that are ice. iced. Ice like, icy. Yeah, like ice, icy eels. iced eels. He falls into a pool of that, and they like right. They freeze him with their ice powers or whatever, and then uh, later on, he almost has like a touching moment. That'd be great. Yeah, I think that's perfect. We'll just keep that. That'll be the typecast that Jamie Foxx carries forward. I think that's good. No, I think that's I think that's wrong. Weird. That's really good. <laughs> weird I think villain powers. In the final fight scene between him and Batman, they're like skating on ice, and as the icicles fall, I think if icicles fell to the ground in like a like in almost yeah, a maybe a, a dub step esque yeah. noise. With icicles falling and then freeze rays blasting and, and things reverberating like, off of these giant icicles. I think like, dubstep would really fit hey, that climax. Man, you may be wondering why I'm wearing this headset. Well, I don't know if you can tell, but the acoustics in here are awful. And so if I just used my normal voice, we'd both go deaf. And then, yeah, like tiny little drop of water is like... Bong. And then, like, a yeah, whole would... ice shelf falls, and it's like, bah, bah. I think that would go really hard. Yeah. I think that would make for an epic final conclusion. And then, like, yeah, when we've got, like, in the future, when we've got uh, Batman Far From Home, where he has to contact Constantine to get the world to forget about him, um, Jamie Foxx, Iceman, Mr. Freeze will <laughs> remember who he is Not and for so some horrible. reason be transplanted there. Yep. I'm loving all of this. I think this is perfect cast. And that is it for our Discord questions. Really quick, in the theme of our Christmas presents episode, Malcolm Rush did ask us, Christmas question, what do you want for Christmas in Hero Clicks or non-Hero Clicks? Have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all. Well, thank you, Malcolm. I appreciate that. Simeon, what would what would be a Hero Clicks gift that you want for Christmas, and then a non Hero Clicks gift? Oh, um, man, I would just love if I could get rid of some of my clicks that I have piled up. Uh, that would be my my perfect uh, Clicksmas gift. Um, truthfully, as far as figures go, uh, if I could get my uh, tarot cards finished, I have. I'm finally, I finally have them all sleeved and I'm needing to make a list of the ones I'm missing. But like, that would be like the one thing where it's like the thing I don't have yet, um, that I'm like actually really looking forward to like completing, but otherwise, yeah, I'm not looking forward to like, I don't need a whole lot. I mostly buy enough of my own stuff. So yeah, yeah. I would say for a hero clicks thing that I really want this year, since uh, I think Simeon, you pointed them out to me that there are also masterpiece versions of all the zombies. And I yeah. thought I was done collecting zombie chases, and I was like, "Cool, I have the originals. I have the Guardians of the Galaxy, the Deadpool ones, and all the other ones. I'm done." I'm like, well, actually, there are masterpiece ones that look slightly better than the other ones, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry. What? Say that again?" And so now I go to sleep every night. Lots of never owning a masterpiece Colonel America in my. That is my new top hero clicks white whale, I guess you could say. Or a non hero clicks present, and I have showed this to several of my siblings and family members and told them if they want to, they could split the price. Let me try to find it. It's movie prop. It is a screen used and worn t shirt by Chris Evans from the first Avenger, uh, from Captain America, the first Avenger, when he wakes up in our time, so I guess 2011, and he's wearing a shield or SSR shirt or whatever it is. That t shirt that he is wearing is for sale for $2,200. And I've thought maybe I should just be irresponsible and just <laughs> buy it. You know, I'm like, I've got it. I could, I could uh, buy it. That is something I could do. But should I? I don't know. I kind of, I still, again, another thing that keeps me up at night, and I just want to buy the $2,200 t-shirt that Chris Evans wore for like 
probably you know a day of filming i don't know those scenes take forever in movies and you know saying and it's one of my favorite movies captain america you know so i've thought about it uh, long and hard about that and i have hinted to several people that if you want to bundle the funds and get that for me for christmas i would be I'd be very thankful for it just saying just saying but yeah so I that's would not say no <laughs> i wouldn't say no no i wouldn't say no to it if you want you know i'm just saying talk about a perfect present biggest captain america fan ever you know, screen used screen worn chris I evans did, captain america shirt um i did see like an uncut uh b-roll of captain america where or it, i think it was captain america in the first avenger but uh he had a mustache and for some reason he was trying to kill um the guy from the notebook ah I don't know why because i don't even remember that guy. uh i can't remember that guy's name but i yeah he was uh he was like trying to protect a child and captain america he was like i'm gonna kill this child and i was just <laughs> like whoa i don't I don't know Glad if they watched... cut this from the, like, the final know. film. Yeah, that would be really weird if yeah. all of a sudden Cap just like had a mustache and all this stuff. Like, yeah, yeah I'm glad that they cut that from the final movie. That'd be they really, even mentioned it. Really like strange. in the film, they were like, "Do they now? It's weird do that they have a mustache? Do they? It's a pretty bad oh, mustache." Oh, do they? Do they yeah. say that a few times? <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. Like oh man, I must. Gross, I better go mustache. rewatch it. I completely, I completely missed that. No, this I this was like all cut. So this oh, is like all cut. director's oh, room floor all stuff. Cut. Of kind course of it is. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to check my, my, my Blu-ray and see if it's in the special features. Yeah. Interesting. How interesting. <laughs> okay, Simeon. Simeon, okay. Being a re- real diesel right now is all I'm saying. He wasn't even in that movie. Was he? <laughs> no. I, ju- I mean, I just watched uh, Did you actually watch no, it? No, that was Did Ryan. Re- Ryan Reynolds it? was in it. Yeah. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. Ryan Reynolds is in it. You actually or... watch Bullet Train, though? Yeah. Oh, dude, so good, right? We don't have to. We don't oh, have to do this on air. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Oh wow, like so awesome though. Yeah. Uh, mini story. I was, I guess maybe what made me happy. What made me happy this week? I didn't even say what. Maybe went over to Simeon's this last week, and he had a work party. So I just we really do this in. But so I was just chilling at his house. I was like, I'll watch a movie. I'll see what's on Netflix. You know, I'll hang out. I'll buy myself a pizza. And they had Bullet Train, and Matt Reed, a listener of the show, recommended that we watch Bullet Train. I was like, all right, I'll watch Bullet Train. I watched it. I was like, wow, that was one of my favorite movies I've seen this year. Holy smokes, it's so good. Yeah. Honestly, when Simeon got back, I was like, I was kind of just be like, do you want to watch Bullet Train? Because like, I could literally watch it again after just I seeing it. I honestly like, would not I'd have been upset. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah, like after watching it, I was like, dang. That was just a like an extremely fun movie. It's not like oh, breaking so any fun. barriers or no. doing anything amazing, but like it for sure is probably in like my top three funnest movies that I've watched this year, which is saying a lot. I've watched some really fun movies. For um, sure, at least top three or so movies this year. And then for just movies that I had so much fun watching, it's it's up there. It's like up there with uh Con Air, and I freaking loved Con Air. Like that movie's hilarious, and I love watching it. I would, I mean, I put it up there with that. If, if sure. people rank those <laughs> similarly, I would. It was great. I cared more about Thomas the Tank Engine, and I also cared more about <laughs> what happened to the actor who plays Fastest than I did when he was Fastest. So, like that go, that's for something, you know. Like, what a great, what a great movie. Wow, it was so fun. I literally yeah. can't wait until all my family is, is here for the holidays and I make them all watch Bullet Train with me. It's going to be a great time. I mean, I feel like there'll be better people for it, for sure. Oh, up. Absolutely. I know I feel I feel like I gained something from watching it. Yeah. Um, Brad Honestly, Pitt's like Aaron, constant, like, uh, whatever, like mantras bad luck. and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I was thinking more so, like, just and... his... Uh, Hey man, don't bundle in all that hate and just yeah, like all that stuff. Positivity. Yeah, it's really funny. That is hilarious. The cameo after cameo slash like, and it didn't even have to be big names to be a good movie because it was also just a good movie. And like the way they did introducing each character, getting their own little mini flashback sequence was really fun. I yeah, I don't want to spoil anything because it's so good. But like the mustache mini goatee combo aaron taylor johnson has makes me think that maybe i could do that i'm not going to it'd be a terrible choice but i'm like man maybe i would look good a mustache ot i think i'm just hair. gonna i'm gonna live my Quick's life like the wolf it. it's like hmm like those boots hmm like those pants 
I don't know. <laughs> wearing uh, wearing another man's boots like that, I've yeah, it's bad luck. I don't know. That's bad luck. Yeah, it I don't is. like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it really is. But I mean, he saw what he wanted and he took it. So I mean, a lot of respect to the wolf. It looks like he was he was living life pretty high for a while. You know, like he was doing good. Um. Anyways, that's Hero Clicks. I apologize to anybody that isn't a Heroclix player that is still somehow listening to this podcast, but maybe yeah, you enjoyed it. You. We warned you yeah, that we it did. was going to go this long and we warned you, we told you, you to lot. leave if you didn't want it. We told you. We, I mean, we did everything in our in our path besides reading off a written document by our lawyers telling you not to keep going. So maybe you enjoyed it and maybe you didn't. Anyways, we're glad you stuck around all the heroes players out there, we hope you guys have fun Christmas shopping. We hope you can try to get each other a great gift for your own Heroclix buddies and pals, and maybe play some fun themed Heroclix games. I remember two years ago, Simi and I had this amazing idea to play a game that was Christmas themed, and then also eat hot wings while doing it, which only led to about 40 minutes of pain, followed by five hours of pain after yeah. we were done filming. One of the weirdest dream sequences I've ever experienced in that <laughs> actual dream life, real life, whatever, not watching like a, a movie where it's like, oh, those dreams don't yeah. happen. And then I just like dreamt of like a horse was carry on the river man and taking me to Hades. But also uh, we were just like piloting around the, the spaceship Saturn or something. <laughs> I was like, none of this oh makes gosh. any sense. And he was like, don't worry about it. I'm a horse that can paddle. And I was like, well, you seem to know what you're doing. So I guess here we go. Oh, gosh. No, those hot ones. Those hot ones. <laughs> yeah. That was not only the most wings I've eaten in a single sitting. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah absolutely. It was also absolutely the hottest, like, I've ever, like, forced myself to eat. It just sure. got progressively worse and worse. Yeah, that was a that was a tough one, but I will say when the video was done, I was very happy that we did it. As I think people had fun. I I know I had a lot of fun rewatching it and yeah. What a good time. Link if you're a new listener to the podcast, and you don't ever seen our Hero Clicks Hot Ones video. We'll pop a link in the yeah, description below. It. We'll probably have a link to a majority of the items that we today, but again, local shops. That's the name. That's what it's all about. But all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I have to say on this yeah. episode of Dialing for Hero Clicks. If you're really, really confident now, don't do it if you're, oh. if you're not confident. But if you're really confident, better check out CoolStuffInc.com. They're the premier Hero Clicks website where you can buy not only the latest sealed products, but also all the cool hero clicks singles as well. So check them out at coolstuffinc.com. Use code dial five at checkout your promo code dial five to save 5% on whatever it is you're buying. And if you spend a hundred dollars or more, it's free shipping. So check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how they, six uh, people humor? think I am funny. It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools. It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails.